in this issue of Video Fashion Style, fashion goes to the dogs. These stylish puppies take the runways, streets, and magazines by storm. Meet doggy style icon, Little Lola Sunshine, as we catch up with the petite pooch and her human at Paris Fashion Week. Well, we watch what comes down the runway every season, and there are certain lines that just have Lola's joie de vivre. Dogs are a woman's best friend and favorite accessory at Isaac Mizrahi and Laquan Smith. I love the fact that a Doberman is so aggressive looking, but they're so pristine and sleek, and I thought that that was a perfect accent to the clothing. Disney hit 101 Dalmatians sparks a style sensation. We were looking at that film and Cruella de Vil, so there's lots of like fake fur tailoring in the collection. Meet the favorite little friends of industry insiders, including fashion's top dog, Sweetie. Now she's got her own career, so she doesn't really have time for me anymore. Plus, you'll be seeing double with canine lookalikes as Jean-Paul Gaultier. All that and many more doggy moments to come on Video Fashion Style. While the Kendalls and Gigi's of the world may be top dogs on the catwalk, there's a petite pooch on the scene who is charming the paparazzi with her diminutive doggy style. Meet little Lola Sunshine. Lola came into my life when she was three months old and um, my life changed forever. I knew I wanted to train Lola to do tricks for children in hospitals. And I met a young woman just by chance. Well, her father is probably one of the world's greatest trick dog trainers. And they agreed to take me on with Lola. So we trained her to do tricks for children in hospitals. And um, she wasn't wearing clothes at the time. But we soon learned that when we ended up at the hospitals, the kids responded really well if Lola had clothes on. And in between the hospital visits and our work for literacy, we decided to come to Paris Fashion Week. Our hope is to make Lola famous enough so that she can become an advocate for her kids. What we do is what we, I call her flash performances. It'll be a street corner. We'll start to do tricks. People laugh, people clap. Lola takes a bow. What we hear most is that Lola, you just made my day. And we leave people a little bit happier. What we would like to do is get people behind us and make a, a cross-country tour, um, which is in the works. Lola took to the dog walks of Paris to show us some of her favorite designer outfits. Well, we watch what comes down the runway every season and there are certain lines that just have Lola's joie de vivre. And then we pick a dress or a little jacket. And I have seamstresses um, and designers that shrink the look down. Who doesn't love Chanel? And there are so many things that Karl Lagerfeld does that are fun and yet elegant. Um, he used a lot of feathers, um, which is very Lola because we like the way they flutter and move. We love um, Moschino because it's fun. And sometimes the best collections don't take themselves too seriously. They send a strong message with a little bit of a wink. We love Andrew again. Andrew invites Lola to his runway and she sits front row. And Lola really likes his elegance and he's a charming man and it comes through in his creations. That's probably one of our big pieces this season and to get out there for Vali is just gonna be so much fun because we're not really serious. This is a little ridiculous. Okay, it might be a lot ridiculous, but it's so much fun, and I hope it leaves everybody smiling. Lola shines brightly in the spotlights of Fashion Month, but her most important mission is to share her sunshine and puppy love with those who need it most. Lola loves kids, and that's her mission, is to help kids.
look at Isaac today, it's a very groomed, clipped eyebrow, a little black eyeliner on the eye, caramel chocolate pout. It's fun, it's upbeat, it kind of pulled everything together so that you almost believed it. I suppose kind of like horsey, equestrian kind of hairdo. So really it's a hair hat, it's a little afro. It's just about having a little bit of fun. Maybe it's not a birthday cake, but it's a, there's definitely a cake. And it's quite a big cake. There's some bright coloured poodles there, right? I think they dyed them with vegetable colours. It's great, right? idea of, I don't know, everything you love, like in, on a list of things I love. Because I feel like as I get older, I don't have room for things that I don't absolutely love. If you notice the fabrics, you'll see it's like a lot of foam fabrics and a lot of poodly textured fabrics and loads of bows, which is really funny. And there's a lot of cake decorating in the show, like a raspberry soup or something, like a raspberry cream. Isaac is a joyful designer with a great sense of humor and fun and life, almost forbidden things because fashion has become so serious and, and intellectual, but he's got humor and wit. I think Isaac's always put whimsy into his clothes. He loves to laugh, he's such a showman. He always wants to have something of the theater about his collection. And so every season he invents something which is very special. When I was a kid, I had a standard apricot poodle named Pom Pom. My sketches, they all had like these kind of hats with pom-poms, which I cropped because I was like, oh, that's wrong. But it was good, like an evening dress with a hat with a pom-pom. And then when Eugene saw it, he said, well, what about a hair pom-pom? And I was like, uh-huh, sounds good to me. I like this idea of fancy and casual, because that doesn't exist right now. Like to now it's like you're either casual and you're like a mess and you look great, or you're like really fancy and you look great and you're all done, and it's realness, you know what I mean? Like, and I'm not doing realness, I'm doing like real and fancy. I love Dobermans, I love dogs. I love the fact that a Doberman is so aggressive looking and very intimidating looking, but they're so pristine and sleek. And I thought that that was a perfect accent to the clothing. Power puppies, I love that. In the seasons leading up to Fall 96, animal prints of all stripes ruled the runways until one, or rather 101, stood out. We saw spots on everything from watches to hats, bags, and all accessories. Even hush puppies changed their pooch of choice 
to grab a piece of the profitable litter. It seemed those folks at Disney were responsible for generating the spotted fever. So lovely to be here tonight. Come on. Come on. Cruella, Cruella. Dalmatians, please, darling, is all the rage. Top Shop Unique turned to a canine classic for fall 2011 inspiration. The first starting point was actually looking at whole um, 101 Dalmatians. Um, so we were looking at that film and Cruella de Vil. So there's lots of like fake fur tailoring in the collection. I'm calling it Dalmatian chic. So it's um, obviously it's a nod to Dalmatian. So they've got this gorgeous black hole all around the eyes. It's quite lived in, but still polished. False lashes on every girl. We're bleaching all 43 girls' eyebrows off. So yeah, it's good fun. And then the ears, they've got Dalmatian nails. It's um, all things doggy, I guess. <laughs> Today you'll see lots of more, it's a bit more refined, I suppose. And we looked at, obviously, like the whole gangster menswear, having lots of belts and the outerwear to sort of like fit it in and pull it in. So it's quite, the silhouette is quite key. I'm wearing, uh black tights with a blouse, a silk blouse, a leather jacket, which are, is the same print as the nails, <laughs> and the shoes, also the same print as the nails. It seems as though people aren't the only ones returning to glamour. It's also going to the dogs. In New York's poshest puppy spot, Come see what's hot for the pooch that has it all. There's been a return to glamour with people and their fashions, and I definitely think there's a tremendous you know, return to glamour with pet fashions, and especially in a store like this. Being that the store is called Parents for People and Pets, there's a reason for that. We do things to match for the pet and the owner. I personally am inspired by the different fashion designers that I really like personally, and that is how I end up putting together my line of clothes. We did some Chanel tweed coats, some Chanel-inspired sweaters, and then we did a lot of fun things. We did plaids, southwesterns, um, fair isle, tweeds, argyles, a lot of soft, wonderful things. Racy's wearing a little gray tweed plaid coat with a camel's hair collar. And we also have other plaids, and then we do great rain wear. But style isn't everything. These outfits protect precious pets from the elements. body temperature will drop and they'll shiver. So if you see them doing that, it's because they're cold, not just because they're afraid. You do a lined raincoat like this is for fall, and we do, you know, Chanel inspired with the buttons and the pockets, and then it has very heavy pile lining. It keeps them warm and dry. All the things in this store and all the toys and all the wonderful products that we have is for the glamorous pet. We have an exclusive with Robert Lee Morris. We helped him put together his pet um, accessory line, which includes a few different style collars, leashes, and so that's an exclusive for this store. It's a pet store in New York. We have Kensington and Worth, and for an exclusive from him, we do Spectators, Lizard, Alligator, and Ostrich, which is exclusive to this store, and then we have those other beautiful leather goods. We're big on pearl necklaces here. We've been doing that for a long time. And we make beads and other things, and we're doing a silver and gold ID this year, but people love pearls here. She's such a silly dog. She's so cute. Josh, can we go swimming? <laughs> People come in and they let their dog run through the store to see the things that it wants because it's like everything that, uh, you know, a puppy or an older dog would want to have. He basically is so excited because there's bones and there's cookies and there's all these things that he just loves to get to. And then there's squeak toys and a accessible, you know, doggy um, box. 
But the owner is more excited because he can get everything that he wants for his dog. I've met many people that live through their pets, things that they wouldn't do for themselves or don't feel they can, or maybe they don't even feel they deserve, but they feel they can give it all to their pet. We've been able to make the dogs feel wonderful, beautiful, and glamorous all the time, and there's no reason if the people can do it for themselves why the pets can't do it too. You know fashion has really gone to the dogs. When a four-legged fashionista named Sweetie gets her own column in Elle magazine, in which she barks out irreverent wit, it doesn't hurt that Sweetie's masters are none other than writer Mark Welsh and fashion designer John Bartlett. Now she's got her own career, so she doesn't really have time for me anymore. The only problem is that she has a lot of problem typing because her hands can't reach the higher keys. She notices the details that nobody else would. She's at that level watching everything. Since Sweetie has her major column at L now, um, we've had a great response, um, and she's such an articulate, adorable, fashionable dog. Mark Welsh, who um, is a writer, he's Sweetie's dad, so it was his idea. Sweetie came up with the concept of Sweetie because she was found on the side of the road, and then three years later she's traveling first class to Milan for the fashion shows. Sweetie has many different ways of looking at life, like, you know, all men are dogs, modeling is my only form of exercise. Sweetie struck her best model pose for Elle magazine. She has a little of uh, Lida Evangelista sometimes, but most of the time she's like Naomi Campbell. I'm going to make no comments about it. If you call her a diva, I probably put myself in trouble for the next shoot. She's the money maker in the family now. I live with Jack Rasson, with the passion of my life. But stylist and photographer Carlene Serf de Dudzil has another major passion, fashion. And she has filled her stylish closet with the objects of her affection. The bedroom actually was in the back. It was uh, the bedroom and I transformed it like a big closet. Jack Rasson, so he travailled with the Concorde, with his mother, in his little bag. Voilà, je sais Jack Russell sleeping in his uh, own basket. And he loves his mask. Jack Russell! Jackie! Ooh! 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 He is a happy dog. Okay, Jack Russell? Bye! Pets.com and Diffa united forces to raise money for AIDS and animal welfare. With the help of some designer outfits, it was a unique night of canine couture. Fashion's gone to the dogs finally, so I'm here. It's a runway show for the pets. I, I'm here because it's an important cause. Somebody told me there was a dog fashion show charity event, and uh, I, I, don't, I don't go to a lot of charity events. I don't get out a lot, really. But for a dog show charity event, I had to be here. They couldn't keep me away. To get a lick from a dog, some people, I think it's the greatest thing in the world. It's like getting a kiss from a child. One of the things we love about this, it's not just about fashion. It's also about animals helping people. So the money goes to AIDS, but it also goes to animal welfare. And DIFA, which is the Design Industry Foundation Fighting AIDS, has done an incredible job getting some of the top designers to design utilitarian petwear for the 21st century. I think that uh, from what I've seen, many are a, uh, a, a canine reflection <laughs> of, their, of their style or their, or in some cases, their humor. I think it was really fun because it's, uh, I, I wanted to achieve a dog uh, outfit that has the same look as the Catherine Malandrino looks for the rock and roll attitude on the outfit. I want a little guy like with strong personality for this outfit. Fitting them is a little different from dealing with a human being, but um, it's a lot more fun because whimsy can be thrown in there and uh, they seem to enjoy the attention and 
having something special and fun to wear. What better shape to make clothes for? It is a, an adorable excuse to get a lot of dog lovers together. I think it's wonderful um, what DIFA does and um, uh, we, I know how much Pedals gives all of us. I have to tell you that my dog has enhancement. You never, it, it, like you, you can, can't possibly conceive how much your dog improves your life. I think the relationship between dog, animal, designer, aids, very, very common and very good. This is Pinky Michelle. Pinky has her go red on with her go red bling. Say, so I'm dressed with mama. Is she gonna hit the runway tonight? Maybe. I'm celebrating my fifth anniversary of successful open heart surgery. So I walk tonight on behalf of all the other survivors of heart disease. Heart disease is the number one killer of women in America, the number one killer of Americans, and the number one killer of African Americans. So I'm three for three. This is a passion of mine and it's really my purpose in life. I think five dogs, three cats, and a barn owl. Riffing on the idea of people resembling their pets, Jean-Paul Gaultier sent out a barnyard's worth of beasts. You know, like the animal, it's quite, it was like quite funny because I quite uh, uh, liked the idea. I remember like some movie I saw when I was uh, a child, you know, that were from Walt Disney, and it was maybe the aristocrat or something like that, you know, where, and the, the funny car, you know, the coccinelle, you know, and the, I remember that they were like a contest, contest of, uh, of uh, animals, you know, of uh, dogs and cats, and you have the owner which look, look alike the cat or the dog, they always like similar, uh, you know, something similar. So I play with that and I was thinking like maybe also not only they look like, but also they can wear the same clothes. So for example, like a corset, why not a corset for, for the dog? So it's what? My idea was around that about like the presentation. So maybe a next line for animals, Gaultier animals, why not? Gaultier dogs, Gaultier cat, <laughs> pourquoi pas? Indeed, pourquoi pas? Cavalli can put his name on vodka, why not a Gautier line of pet hair? Gautier also looks beyond the Aristocats to other cinematic influences. He told me that he took his inspiration from Sleeping Hollow, you know, the Tim Burton movie. So hence you had that sort of ghostly, grey veiling, fluttering, and the sort of sound of horses whinnying and crows crowing. and So it's slightly spooky, a sort of fashion melodrama. That Gautier was a fantastic question for Gautier. I mean, I was completely stunned by it because I felt, you know, where is this high fantasy girl coming from, this kind of gothy, you know, long-haired, pre raphaelite kind of cyber game chick coming from it? Who says fashion is just for people? Your pooch can be just as chic as you with a proper dose of puppy style.